Thalassemia is a recessive inherited blood disorder, beta thalassemia major, also known as Cooley's anemia. Happens when body is unable to make an important blood protein called beta globin. The beta globin gene is on chromosome 11. Everyone receives two copies of the beta globin gene from their parents, one from their mother and one from their father. Both of these beta globin genes contain instructions for making the protein. The cellular machinery in every newly developing red blood cell reads the gene's instructions to build beta globin proteins. However, in a person with beta thalassemia, the two copies of the gene contain mutations that garble the instructions. Though the mutations can be small as small as a single letter change in a gene, that has 1,600 letters of code that completely turn off the production of the gene. Beta globin is needed to make hemoglobin, the molecule used to deliver oxygen to every cell in body. The beta globin carries the heme group that binds the oxygen molecule. Two beta globin proteins combine with two similar looking alpha globin proteins and their heme groups to make one hemoglobin molecule. When the beta globins are not made, the alpha globins accumulate inside new red blood cells. There is nothing for the alpha globins to bind with. Thus no hemoglobin is made. Without hemoglobin, the oxygen cannot be delivered properly. The body senses this and tries to compensate by increasing the production of two other types of proteins. That can also bind with alpha globins. Gamma and Delta Gamma chains combine with alpha to make hemoglobin F, the type of hemoglobin that is predominant during fatal life. Delta chains combine with alpha to make hemoglobin A2, the secondary adult hemoglobin. Oxygen delivery rests solely on these alternate hemoglobins, but not enough can be made. Excess alpha globins are left unbound in the cell, and they clump together on the inside of the cell's membrane. The more alpha chains that stick to the membrane, the worse it is for the cell. The clumps of alpha chains tell the cell to kill itself. This kills 95% of the newly formed red blood cells. The red blood cells that do manage to mature are not quite normal. They are smaller than average and they look pale form the lack of hemoglobin. Inside the surviving beta thalassemia blood cells, clumps of alpha chains continue to damage the cells. These mutant cells do not last as long as normal red blood cells. Left untreated, the lack of red blood cells and resulting anemia in the patient directs the bone marrow to increase cell production up to 10 times the normal rate. However, the strategy to increase the number of cells does not work. The vast majority of these cells die as well. The pumped up production of red blood cells and the massive numbers of cell deaths have several effects on the body of a person with beta thalassemia. To accommodate the increased cell production, the size of the bone marrow grows and pushes bones outward. This could distort the person's appearance, particularly in the face and head. The sheer number of damaged red blood cells can overwhelm the spleen, which is in charge of removing the injured and dying cells from bloodstream. The harder the spleen works to remove the damaged red blood cells, the harder the body works to create more cells. This feedback loop stresses the body's system, sometimes removal of the spleen can relieve some of this stress. Without frequent transfusions of blood, a child with severe thalassemia will fail to grow and develop properly and will eventually die prematurely.